What's up YouTube, Magnus here, back with another video for you guys. I contacted Blackbeard Projects a little while ago to see if he wanted to do some kind of collaboration video with me, and in response he sent me this leatherworking round knife, or head knife. He wants me to talk about the knife, see if it's any good, and maybe do a sheath for it. So, let's get started. But before we get started, remember that you can find almost all the patterns and artwork from my projects on my website and my Etsy shop. Link in the description down below. You can also find the same patterns and artwork month to month on my Patreon account, so have a look at that. And hey, if you want to help support the channel even more, I've been designing shirts for a while with Viking themes and artwork. They're linked in there in the description area. This video is brought to you by Lonsdale Leather. Check them out in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, or at lonsdaleleather.com. Links in the description down below. You can find all sorts of tools, leather, and supplies. The knife he sent me is gorgeous, and though I don't use a head knife a ton, I wanted to go over a couple things that could be better with it. As you can see here, it does its straight lines and its curves both pretty well, but one thing is it doesn't have a point. It's almost like he's safety did a bit on his. It's a little bit uh, rounded, and you do want that point so you can start anywhere on the leather. It also has more of a... Um, wider angle and you want that angle there to be quite sharp because you want to be able to make tight turns with it and he's got this big bevel on here I'm not sure why I think he thinks that I'm just gonna skive with it and you can skive leather with a head knife uh, I'm not very good at it but you don't really need to do a big bevel on it for that purpose this has just got a edge on either side I know it's a mess too I don't really take care of this knife very well so right away, I would follow the curve that he's already got in place and make a sharper point on this knife. And I wouldn't have done a crazy bevel. It does seem to work pretty good. But I would have just left the edge the same on either side. Just like a more traditional knife edge. This blade cover is going to be much like you would make for an axe head, where you're scooping one part of your blade into the sheath and then closing the other side to stop it from coming off. So all you need are three parts. Your front, your back that also has some kind of flap to connect to the front to close, and the welt which gives you some separation so the blade can fit inside the sheath. I'm using some vegetable tanned leather here that I picked up from Lonsdale Leather because I'm going to carve the front of this sheath. If you want to carve your leather, you need to use vegetable tanned leather. There are no other options. I get that question asked a lot, and I'm repeating it here. No other options. Vegetable tanned leather or nothing. Because of all the support from you guys, I've been able to pick up an iPad Pro, and so I do all my artwork on Procreate on my iPad now. So I just took a picture of the pattern, and then I drew my serpent into the appropriate area. If you're an aspiring artist, you can't go wrong with an iPad Pro. If you have the money, pick one up. You can use a laser printer to print off your designs onto tracing film. I tape my tracing film to a regular piece of paper so it just follows the paper through and gets the design printed onto it. Then you just wet your leather, let it dry a bit, and trace your design on. Once the design's all traced on, you need to use a swivel knife to cut all your lines. I always polish my swivel knives up, even though I have a ceramic blade. You don't really need to sharpen ceramic blades, but it does remove any kind of uh, leftover residue from past projects. The leather carving I do is fairly simple in nature. You can get really complicated with leather carving. All I need for mine is a swivel knife, a few bevelers, and a couple of backgrounding tools. But if you're doing more traditional Western style leather carving, the detail that you can get on your piece is quite incredible. Once we've got all of our lines cut, it's time to add more depth by beveling where it needs to be beveled. And for knot work, it needs to be beveled where the knots are going under and over each other. Other artwork, you can increase or decrease the depth of the bevel depending on what you want to move into the background of your piece. After that, I'm going to use a few backgrounding tools of the same texture but different sizes in order to separate the carving image from the background and give it a little more life. Okay. 
Sometimes you have to wet your leather again. If it gets too dry, it is hard to stamp. If it's too wet, it stamps a little weird. I'm stamping this way too soon after I've wet it, but it turned out fine. Really, I should have dyed the inside of the piece before gluing it. I'm using this Renia contact cement. It's the only one I've found recently that doesn't stink up a storm and is satisfying my gluing needs. I'm trying to avoid using barge or more toxic type of contact cements. Now I'm going to bevel the parts that will be separate from the glued piece. You don't want to just bevel all the way around the edge because you want everything to be flush when it joins together. If you're gluing a piece together and on the glued edges there's a bevel, then it's no longer flush at the outside edge and that kind of looks silly. I've had this tiny little blade on a piece of tape ever since I worked on Warcraft and I think it's the same blade on that tape, honestly, it's pretty funny. And I just use that to rough up the edge so it glues a little easier. Once we've got this glued together, we're going to tap it down and then look into making sure all those edges are nice and even by sanding them down because there's always going to be some inconsistency. Then we're going to do our final bevel. Sander made a bit of a mess there, but it worked out. Look at that, it fits. Perfect. We're on the right track. I'm using Phoebing's Pro Dye here. It dyes more evenly, but it also dyes a little lighter, so you might need a couple of coats. But also, once you hit it with your resist or finish, it does darken a little bit. And then it's a tedious process of painting with dyes all of the background. I just really like how it looks in the end when I do this, so I almost always do this. Now, because we're going to be using an antique finish on this, don't worry too much about being perfect. Like, try and be as perfect as possible, but the antique finish will blend everything together and make it look a lot more professional. Once I'm happy with the amount of dye on my project and it's dried for an appropriate amount of time, I'm going to spray the front and back with this neutral resoline. Spray guns are awesome, highly recommend them for any kind of finishes. Once that's done, we're putting some gel antique on, so don't put too much because it'll uh, get all over... Uh, well, okay, this is better than usual for me, honestly, that wasn't too bad. You can see how it blends everything together, and I make sure I put it on the back and all the edges as well to have an even color. Not everybody has a sewing machine, but I do, so I'm going to sew this. If you don't have a sewing machine, there's lots of different hole punches you can use to hand stitch around this edge. I have decided not to do that, so I'm using a very tiny needle and pretty thin thread and just staying an even distance from the edge of my project, and it turned out pretty nice. I was a little worried about how it would look. I could have stitched in the backgrounded area of my tooling if I had planned a little better, but I did not plan a little better. Buff it up a little bit, and then we're going to do the edges. I'm going to use tokenol this time. I've used beeswax a lot, and I got this tokenol a while ago from Japan, and it's really nice. It's just a little more finicky than beeswax. Beeswax, you just kind of rub it on, and it's good to go. This you got to, like, smear on. But the finish on it is really nice, so I'd recommend picking up a bottle, but I think you can only get it from Japan. They won't... Yeah, so it takes a while to get it, and it's a tiny little bottle. Once that's done, make sure you buff both sides, and then spray another coat of your finish on your project to protect the antiquing. After that, we're finally going to put a little button stud on here. Obviously, planning ahead of time and making sure that hole is there way before, it would have been better, but I don't always plan ahead. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do for a closure. big thank you to Blackbeard Projects for sending me that round knife. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun to test it out and build a sheath for it. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for future videos. Hit that notification button so you don't miss any of my content. And until next time, keep on being creative and
whatever it is you do.